So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Greetings from wherever you are joining us today. It is my absolute honor and pleasure today to sit here in the role of host <laughs> on Isabel's talk show and interview you, Isabel. So thank you. And yes, welcome. it's me. I'm the grill today. Woo! <laughs> Fabulous to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for being here and uh, being uh, the, the host today. Well, it's a lovely um, a seat to be sitting in, and I'm so excited to hear what you've got to talk about today. But can I start by introducing you first? Yes, please. Please yeah. do. So just to let you know, anyone who's viewing now, Isabel um, from Paris, France, to Quito, Ecuador, via Sheffield, England. Isabel Nanin, our very own Isabel, has been living now in Quito, Ecuador since 2009. In case you didn't know, she's a women's empowerment coach and she created Phoenix Coaching and Training. Using her caring and intuitive listening skills, she helps women to shed light on their blocks, their fears and their negative patterns. And then by accompanying them on a magical journey of discovery and introspection, they can then reclaim their true selves and conquer the world. Wow. <laughs> powerful stuff. That's powerful yeah. stuff. <laughs> and can I just share briefly about my own experience? Because I'm um, just reading that bio there, as you said, you've, you've traveled and lived in different parts of the world and you support women. And I've had the pleasure of working with you one-to-one -one and in groups. And I can say from my own experience that you really support clients to get to the core of the matter really quickly. You sort of cut through, you know, very quickly. Um, you inspire people to take empowered action, I would say, to push their boundaries in the direction of their goals. Um, you very much lead by example, Isabella, I have to say. Um, and you champion every opportunity, I would say, for learning and growing. And, you know, so nothing's a mistake, nothing's sort of wrong, but, you know, you look for the best in that. So with all that being said, would you like to share a bit about your topic today? Well, first, thank you, Joe, for uh, the introduction. And uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience with me. <laughs> and uh, today, Joe, we're going to talk about choice. Right, yeah. choice. So why choice? Why did I pick this uh, topic? Well, I was talking to, uh, to some friends uh, from England uh, when uh, they said to me, oh, you know what you did really, uh, you were lucky to do it, you know, to move from England to uh, South America, living my life there, backpacking and uh, ending up in I ended up here in Ecuador and I, and I loved it and it's my home there and I just said like no it's a choice it is a choice right I made that choice to just uh, well give my notice in to sell my house and just uh, go alone backpacking something I had never done before mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, that's my experience but there are as well some people who tend to, to complain all the time about what they don't like could be work, could be a relationship, could be anything going over and over again. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you ask them, well, actually, uh, have you done something about it? They would probably say, well, no, I haven't. Nothing, really. I've done nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Or they would find every excuse on the planet to justify why they haven't done it. And they would probably use the, um, the, the expression, I don't have the choice. Mm. Really, I don't have the choice. I've definitely so, heard that before. I, I, yeah, I think I can understand where you're coming from. That sort of summary there of, yeah, like feeling unempowered or not really feeling like you can choose to do something different or be in a different scenario. Feeling stuck in a way. So, mm. Joe, what, what is making a choice for you? What is the definition of making a choice? It's a good question. I would say usually I would think of it in like weighing up some options like maybe looking at is this the best thing or is this and maybe looking at the pros and cons and then maybe making a choice mm -hmm. is there any other sort of yeah I think that's how I would describe it that's true and I would add something else uh -huh. I would say making a choice is an act of selecting freely from a number of alternatives we are free to do it 
we don't have to depend on other people to do it. That's the beauty of it. Mm. We are in charge, right? Okay. And actually we make choices every single day. We mm. make small choices, big choices, could be related to time, could mm -hmm. be related to relationships, to money, to uh, work. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we don't realize that there are choices because for us, it's just like normal. Yeah. Right? So let's have a look at some examples. Example of a normal day. Well, you're going to work and uh, you don't want to be uh, um, late to work. So the night before you set the alarm, you okay. set the time. That's first choice. Okay. Then you get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, you have a shower or a bath. Second choice. Then you choose your clothes, right? Could yes. be like trousers, could be like a, like a, um, a skirt. You choose, right? Mm -hmm. You have breakfast. Fourth choice. What did you have for breakfast, Joe, today? Uh, I think it was just a cup of tea and some fruit, actually, this morning. I was just trying to remember. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. What about so you? Maybe, maybe tomorrow you'll yeah. get something different. That's yeah. your choice. Yeah, it could be can I ask you what you had? <laughs> I had coffee and toast. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. You drive to work mm. instead of taking the bus or the taxi, right? You arrive at the office. What do you do? Do you go straight to your uh, to your desk, open your computer, check your emails, or you go and have a coffee with your uh, colleagues and just have a quick chat before starting to work? Choice, choice, choice. Mm -hmm. So we have the choice to continue to suffer in the situation we're in. We go over and over and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, okay. And that's where comes the paradox, right? Mm. By not choosing, we actually make an unconscious choice. It's okay if you want to stay in that space, that's fine, that's your choice, right? right. So well, that's an interesting concept. So even as you say, sometimes in the not choosing, you are also choosing because that's still a choice as well. That's quite an important point there. Exactly. But right. you are in control. If you don't want to choose, that's fine. If you feel that that situation is, is okay, well, right. that's, that's okay. Or you take action, mm -hmm. right? To create really the outcome you, you desire. So in a way, if you stay in that space as the first option, well, in the long run, you're going to be unhappy. You're going to get bitter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in, in a way, it, you're going to stay in that space. Maybe at that moment, you uh, find something beneficial in staying in that space, right? But in the long run, is it what you really want? Mm -hmm. Or in the second action, you take the uh, so second option, sorry, you take action and, and you make a decision, and then it will create the result you want. Yeah, see more possibilities. So, really, what you're describing is that in each moment, even when we're not necessarily thinking about it, like you mentioned about our day, like going through the day, even that was quite fascinating, the number of choices that you've made even before you've left your house in the morning, you know, on, on, a, on a regular day. I don't know if we often think about those as choices. We probably just do that as a matter of routine without really consciously thinking that. Um, and maybe most of us weigh up, like you said, those bigger decisions as the choices, um, like you said, you know, in, in that sense. But what I found quite interesting about what you've said thus far is that it really is up to you. So there's a point of you deciding or choosing to take action, not to take action, or to look at other possibilities, would you say? Exactly. That's, uh, that's the thing. I mean, when we are in a difficult situation, is it good for me first, right? If it's not good for me, what are the other options? Mm -hmm. And then make a decision. Right. Or we decide that that situation is not good, but I'm staying in that situation. Why? Because sometimes it can be scary to change, could be uncomfortable, right? Yes. And, but if you don't take ownership of your life, nobody will. Mm. If you don't take ownership of your choices, 
nobody will do it. So talking about the two options I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. personally, and that's the way I am, yeah. I will choose the second option. Yeah. I think the second option is better. Mm-hmm. Take okay. action. So you're, you're, you're in control, you're in movement, right? And there is a quote I like, it's, it's the pain of the process is only temporary, but the feeling of achievement lasts forever. Oh, so that's what I haven't heard before. Mm, so yeah, it might be painful, yeah. might be painful because you might leave some people on the side because they don't agree with your choice. Yeah. Right? But you have to be aligned with who you are. Mm. So it might be difficult to just say, okay, I'm moving from the job I don't like to do something totally different, but something which resonates to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, there is an implication in everything we, uh, every choice we make, right? Mm. We gain and we lose. But we need to assess what we gain mm-hmm. is more than what we lose. So that's quite important as well, even understanding that, because I think that sometimes that can almost paralyze you from making the choice because you are so concerned about whether it's the right decision. As you said, like it can be quite a a big thing to decide to, you know, backpack and around the world and and to to completely, you know, like um, give up a job or change the situation, even in, you know, even within your own relationship, for example, Um, those can be quite major and it can sometimes feel too much, like the weight of it can feel too scary. So I think what you were just explaining there about understanding that you gain and you lose, I've not really heard it explained like that before. Yeah, and the fact as well that maybe it's not the right time to do it now, mm-hmm. and it's fine, and it's okay. We yeah. don't have to do things straight away. If we feel that we don't, it's not the right time or, or we feel uncomfortable with the situation, maybe something will trigger that choice down the line. Right. Or maybe never, but maybe you can change your mind. You can just say, well, you know what? Yesterday I didn't want to do it, today I do. Yes. So okay. don't pressure yourself in making a choice, making the choice because you feel it and that's something I'm going to talk about later on. Okay. So let's have a look at having the choice, how we talk to ourselves. Mm. Mm. Okay. When we say to ourselves, I have to do X, Y, Z, right? I need to do that. I have to, uh, to do that because I've got no other option. Mm. I have no choice. Is that true? Do we really have to? Mm-hmm. So if we change the narrative a little bit, right. instead of I have to do X, Y, Z, I change the verb and just say, I want to do X, Y, Z. Uh-huh. Okay. If we say I need to do that and replace it by I choose to do that. That's quite powerful. That's a whole different um, resonance and feeling to that completely. Mm-hmm. Totally. I have no other option and just say, I have other options. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. I have no choice. I have the choice. Wow. Change the verbs by I want, to want, to wish, to choose, mm. to desire. I desire to do something. Mm. Really do desire. And that comes from inside, not from an external pressure right not like a should or like a a judgmental space exactly Mm. i do it because i want to do it Mm. okay sounds can i i was just going to say that sounds like you could make that subtle shift as you were just talking there about replacing even one of the words or removing a word from that sentence and even as you were just reading those statements out in a different way that feels different when you hear that. So as, as say, if you were going to say that to yourself, that you might then be able to really tune into, as you said, is this the right time for this? And, and do I, am I choosing this? Do I really want to, you know, f- ha- what, what feeling is this conjuring up in me as I speak those words or as you make those subtle differences that actually open up? <laughs> Definitely. And once again, you're getting the control back because you want. 
you desire, mm. right? You wish. Yeah. So. Mm, that's interesting because I was going to ask you that. What about when people feel that a choice has been imposed on them, like something has happened externally? Mm-hmm. It could be a loss of a job and not of your choosing or something similar. So, okay. you do, yeah. Well, you know, there is a, a thing as well we tend to do is to choose others over us. So we have the choice to choose ourselves over others. And people are just like, yeah, but what does that mean to choose myself? Mm -hmm. It means like living the life you want and nobody else's. And it's not being selfish because people are just like, yeah, but they're saying to me that I'm selfish because I do my things. No, it's in a way honoring who you are and honoring your needs. Right, it's it's a way to um, to look after yourself. It's self care to create the life you really desire. Yeah. Now, in one thing as well, I've uh, I've noticed that sometimes we we make choices according to other people, right? And because we don't want to hurt them, which is fair enough, yeah. but at the end of the day, we end up hurting them and ourselves ourselves as well why because we are not authentic Mm. we don't listen to our true needs right and we can't know what others really need so in a way choose yourself right that's yeah definitely my thoughts were going there like um you may feel a sense of responsibility or something else in the situation as you said you're weighing up these other elements that you said and thinking about other people that are in the situation as well but I I, I understand what you're saying there I like what you said about like bringing it to yourself like to reflecting when you know what you know what do you feel is necessary and then I wonder then would you then communicate that with other people if obviously it does have impact on others the choices you made for example to leave work or to leave home and things like that how I'm imagining having these conversations maybe with my sons who are you know young adults right now so and if you could speak a little bit to that. <laughs> well, yeah, you obviously you need to communicate. When somebody asks you to do something you don't want to, to do, or, or it's like a choice that you don't want to do, and just say, well, you know what, I don't want to do that. But what, or maybe offer a, a solution and just say, well, I would rather do that. What do you think? Right? Yeah. So, uh, and I, that's what I tend to do. I offer a solution saying, you know what, I, I don't want to do that, but... What about that or that and that? And we pick um, and we choose together. Yeah. Okay, some of it's mutually right or that, yeah, exactly. it's an opportunity to discover some mm-hmm. of the choices that you may not have thought of yourself in the first place, right? Exactly. Or wanting to move from, uh, from one job to another. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, talk to your partner if you have a partner or talk to your best friend and, and just say, look, that's the way I want to do it for such reason. That's my choice. Mm-hmm. And, and by doing it as well, even if it's scary, even if it's uncomfortable, you will always learn something. Yes. <laughs> That's the thing I suppose to remember as well, um, that yes, along the way, you're going to choose that like you said, it may be the right decision in that moment. It may feel like the wrong decision in that moment. That each time that you make that choice and you put yourself first and you and you take the action, I suppose you learn something, which will then support your future choices or your future endeavors. Yeah, exactly. And the way you are, that's something we're going to see as well. So, uh-huh. and <laughs> we we have the choice how we respond to situations. Right. Yes. If somebody talks bad about yourself, about you, for example. And, uh, well, you have the choice. You can take it so personally and fight back. Mm-hmm. Or you can just say, you know what? That's your opinion, but you don't really know me. So I don't care what you think. Mm. And maybe looking at the situation, because it's true, we humans, we tend to go for a negative side of the, the situation. And why, why, why do we have to, to put ourselves under pressure looking at something in a, I would say, in a, in a bad um, situation, like we, we see the negative all the time. Right. 
why can't we just shift and just say, well, in that case, they are talking bad about me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care at all. And maybe this person, do I really want to have a relationship with them? Right. Looking it at a different, in a different, uh, with a different pair of glasses, I always say to my clients. I like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or with different, different eyes, I like that. But a different pair of glasses, that's quite an interesting, like, metaphor that you can imagine doing that. See it with someone else's vision point. Yeah. Actually, usually I do it, but I wasn't ready today. I just changed my glasses and just say, <laughs> hey, that's it. I see differently. <laughs> So I'm cook. If I could ask you then, is that I'm so cool to ask? Is that a skill that you would build over time? Because something like that, as you said, being able to pause in the moment, that, that could be a quite a highly emotive thing. You could be really upset, or you could be really angry, or you could feel, you know, like bursting into tears. I don't know. It could be in a, you know, such a such a big emotion attached to that. And is that perspective? And it's fine. Joe, yeah. it's fine to have emotion. And it's fine to cry and it's fine to, to get angry. Mm. But in the long run, who's going to be um, in a difficult position or who's going to be really feeling that? You, yeah. right? Not the other person talking bad about yourself. That's true. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing. Are you going to give the power to those people? Or mm. are you going to retake your power to empower to empower yourself yeah right? and yeah. just say well that's their view right that's their point of view but that's it's not mine so i know it's hard it's difficult but that's that's a habit you you need to uh, to work on yeah um, but instead of feeling in that space of emotion uh crying uh feeling bad just say Okay, well, I recognize that I, it did hurt me, but I'm not going to give that person the power over me. Yeah. So that's fine. Let's move on. Yeah, because I can imagine then that could absolutely ruin your day. That could then negatively impact, you know, the, your other interactions in the day and maybe even your whole week. And that's not worth it. I, I think what you're saying is, yeah, you could sort of nip it in the bud there and not allow it to, you know, further detriment on the rest of your day or, you know, your week. So... Yeah. And it can knock your confidence down, right? Absolutely. And thinking, oh, wow, do they, are, are they right? Uh, am I really like that? And, uh, but they don't know you, not right. as you know yourself. So, yeah, and things can be misinterpreted. Like you said about putting on the different glasses, there's even times when, um, I don't know, you've had this maybe even sending a text message or even in a conversation, someone doesn't understand the, the, your motive or your intention behind what you've potentially said or done, an action that you've taken. So again, it can help to sort of, as you said, to examine that. Like you said, do I believe that of myself? And maybe to not take on that as, as you said, in a blame sort of way and feel like you're absorbing that, but to, to try and understand where the other person's coming from. And then, as you said, choose whether you accept their comment, because it may be a good point of criticism or something that you could work on. And as you say, we've all got areas to improve on. But I like that idea of putting on the different glasses and just taking a moment. Oh, to yes. <laughs> Mm. And the thing is, it's the way it's said as well. I mean, if the person is really uh, offensive, uh, you will probably receive uh, the um, the comment in a, in a, it's going to hurt you, right? Mm. Uh, in a difficult way. And, uh, and if it's like criticism, but like productive criticism, it's different. Uh, I understand that. But when you feel that emotion, recognize, recognize it. And mm -hmm. just, um, I would say, embrace it to just say, okay, thank you very much, emotion, for telling me that mm -hmm. there is something I need to work on, right? And then explore where does that come from? Or mm -hmm. it, it did trigger that emotion. Was it something from my past, something from my childhood? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been told several times and working on that and, yeah. uh, and, and not giving the power to other people in, in that situation. And just thinking, okay, well, and maybe thank them as well, because that's something you need to work on. Yeah, yeah. That's helpful. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do we make choices? Yes. Well, I'm going to give you my secret, right? <laughs> <Me again. laughs> 
I usually sit in a very quiet room mm -hmm. where I can sit with myself. Right. I just um, forget everything around me and I'm just, I try to listen to myself, listen to my heart, listen to my body, right? Okay. And sometimes when we have to make choices, so as we said in the definition, we've got different options, different alternatives. So what mm -hmm. I tend to do is I put my hand on my chest and I close my eyes and try to visualize one of the choices. For example, let's say we're going to talk about um, two options about a new job, right? You've got two opportunities. Well, just put your hand on your chest, mm -hmm. close your eyes and feel the way you're going to be in that job they're offering you because you know more or less the job it's going to be, right? Then just write it down and get up, shake, so to get rid of the emotion and do the same with the other option. And if you've got three options, four options, do the same with all the different options, but shake between the options. Okay. And listen to yourself, listen how your body reacts because mm -hmm. the body knows better. The energy is there, right? The emotion, what you feel. Because with that powerful emotion, it's going to guide you to make the right decision. I actually, where people will say intuition, could be intuition, I, I use that as energy. I've done it before where I actually went against what I felt and it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I was just like, well, you didn't listen to yourself. So yeah. uh, obviously you got what you uh, you didn't want, but you didn't listen to yourself. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's the way I do it. That's the secret. And when I left England, that's what I happened. I mean, I had a good job. I had a, uh, like I had a life really. And I just said, no, that's not, that's not what I want anymore. So what do I do? But that's what I did. And, uh, and I listened to my, uh, to myself and then started backpacking on my own uh, three or four months uh, down the line and and I, I was just like yeah that's really what I wanted to do and everybody was just like oh my god what are you doing and yeah. uh, I just said well that's what I need that's what I want that's my choice I could have stayed in that space but that yeah. wasn't me anymore so I just thought okay I'm just going to listen to myself. And that's what I did. I really listened to myself. Mm. And that's quite a, a different way of um, coming to choice, as you said. So moving out of this logical, really analytical way of looking at things, right? And dropping down into the body, as you said. Um, I found it, what you said, they're super, great secret, super useful to get away from other stimulus, as you said, and to have that moment of quiet, like it's almost like that permission to pause that we've talked about before, isn't it? Giving yourself some space, but yeah, dropping in and sensing with your body, like you said, as opposed to your mind, um, yeah. it made me think of your gut, you know, trusting your gut, they used to say. Exactly, trust that's exactly the right uh, expression. Right, okay, wow. That's a yeah. valuable, valuable gift. Definitely make a note of that because, um, as I said, I think all too often we can be consumed by the choice or feel it's very, um, I don't know, immediate. And as I said, be a little bit too much in our mind. So that's a valuable um, suggestion there or an invitation to, you know, to drop into our bodies a bit more. Yeah, because that the example I said that I actually went against my guts, right? I use my brain right and I was like yeah but it's going to give you this and that and, blah, blah, blah. and yeah. I just said okay so the logic took yeah. over yeah and uh, and then afterwards as I said to myself right you didn't listen you didn't listen to yourself so yeah. here you are <laughs> Wow. So actually what you're layering there in the choice that you said, there's an empowerment in choice, but it's also deeply um, growing your trust yes. as well. Trust in yourself, trust in, as you said, that you're able to go out in the big wide world, you know, even metaphorically, there's really building that deep trust. Yes. Wow. Okay. And trusting yourself that, you know, well, we know as coaches that yeah. all the answers are within and that's what we do with our clients. We guide them to get the answer. 
Well, mm. why can't we take the time to listen to those answers? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Question. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, yeah. so let's have a look at the benefits of choosing. Cool. Mm. By choosing, you get more clarity. Well, you've got several options. You just say, okay, I go for the, let's say, the uh, option number three. Mm -hmm. That's it. I know where I am. I know where I'm going. Go for it. Okay. Happiness. Because you've made that choice. You're not in that limbo thinking, oh, my God, um, am I uh, in the right situation? Am I not? So by, by making a choice and yeah. uh, you are, in a way, um, you know um, what you want. You are happy because you are creating what you really want. So for me, it brings happiness, peace as well, peace, because you are not like going over and over all the time thinking, should I do this? Should I do that? So yeah. um, happiness and clarity. And the, the last one for me is freedom. I'm free. I'm free. I don't have to, um, to listen to other people. Mm. And I'm free to, uh, to respond. I'm free to talk to myself because I'm making choices, right? Yeah. My choices. No pressure from yeah. outside, no control from outside. The only control is me. I'm controlling my life. And ultimately, that's all we have. So that was great. So your first point there was it, it, making this choice and having choice and exercising your choice brings you clarity, you said? Clarity, happiness, freedom. Nice. And when I say happiness, I'm, I'm, um, I'm including peace as well. You know, you're, you're at peace with yourself yeah. because you've made that decision, that choice. Mm -hmm. and, and you're happy because by choosing, by making a choice, um, you are um, going, you are working towards those, uh, those yeah. choices. And you are happy because you're making the choices you chose. Exactly. And as you said, moving out of that state of anxiety and worry and limbo and all that, like you said, the back and forth in, it's really a catalyst, as you said, to achieving what you want and then to finding out that like you said, what's on the other side? Mm -hmm. like you said, on the other, what's on the other side of that choice? So not here in the fear and the worry, but to actually that, that sort of brings peace, doesn't it? And a happiness just to even know that you've exercised that, um, you know, that courageous act in, in moving forward. And I even think that it's a right we have and um, for ourselves, you know, we've got mm -hmm. the right to choose. Well, it definitely um, makes me think a lot about how we're educated as well and even how we might parent and, as you said, how we speak to others in relate as well, because I think quite often as you said maybe there is that sense in our in our dialogue in our language that we tend to downplay the choices that we have as you were saying right at the beginning we sort of think oh I don't this I can't do that we really like um you know like saturate ourselves with that and maybe that's how we're taught in schools as well because you're very much directed or told what to do mm -hmm. so it's um a wonderful thing as you said to to build that skill and exercise that muscle of choosing consciously as you was even saying so not that you know like the unconscious thing but to really um see what a powerful thing it is to make these choices and how that can develop your confidence that you said um, your trust in yourself and ultimately having you living the life that you can you know look at and consider that this is this is the life I'm choosing so that feels so different doesn't it yeah oh totally totally and and I know that <clears throat> People are terrified something sometimes to choose because they fear that it might not be the right choice and mm. they, are, they will be um, accountable and they don't want to actually feel responsible, more or less, of uh, those choices. But who said that we can't change our choice? Nobody this is what I was going to ask. So what if it goes wrong? What if you make this choice and you, you know, you got there and you realize this is absolutely the worst thing ever. I can't stay here. This is, it's not what I thought it was. I'm, you know, maybe in a, in a whole different scenario than I had imagined, as you said, than I'd visualized. Yeah. What then? Well, sense. you change, you make another choice. Right. 
who, who will say to you, you can't change and uh, you, you, you have the right to change your mind. And if people say to you, yeah, but you told me that you were going to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I made the choice with the information I had at that time. Right. Right. Okay. And now I've got other information and I've decided to change my mind and make another choice. What's the problem? That's a very good point because sometimes that can inhibit your choice as well, feeling ashamed or feeling like, yeah, you've told people you're doing this, you know, like that other thing of other eyes watching you as well. Will you feel yeah, being, being judged, being, being judged, judged, right? Oh, you said you would do that and you didn't. Well, yeah, I changed my mind. Yeah. Right. And I know I keep saying that, and uh, but we've got a saying in French thing, only uh, stupid people don't change their mind. Oh, that's a cool <laughs> you stay if you know you're in a, in in a difficult situation or you're in a you made a choice which is in a way not the correct choice now but it was at the time mm -hmm. well, that you would be stupid not to change yeah and make another choice right yes you wouldn't you know go round and round in circles for the sake of it why not as you said yeah exactly and just see if people just start uh, judging you and just say well as i said earlier at the time, I had that information and I made that choice. Now I've realized that um, the information was not correct or maybe um, the information I had at the time has changed. Yeah. I'm changing my, my choice. And we are changing all the time. So I think, like you said, even accepting that, that, you know, the, the person that you are today um, differs so much from, you know, six months ago, a year ago, we've all had things that will impact us and change us and change our mindset, um, our desires, as you said, our wishes and our wants. So that's, that's, that's good to know that we can continue to choose as well. It's not just a, you've made the choice and that's it. Then you, you know, you're stuck again, that that's evolving and ongoing um, element of our lives and what you were saying and that's uh, it, it leads on what I want I want to say now is the fact that we are making choices and uh, and uh, we are changing our mindset as well we have mm. the choice to become the person we want to be right and uh, John C. Maxwell says life is a matter of choices and every choice you make makes you so ask yourself, who do you want to be? Mm. So, it's definitely got me thinking. Would you mind repeating the quote? Sorry. Yeah. Really, yeah. Life is a matter of choices mm. and every choice you make makes you. Yeah. That really puts you in that driver's seat of creation. And yeah, wow. That's a really impactful way to end there, Isabel. Oh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. We, you know, started off with thinking about, yeah, where we are in life, things that may have happened, the very unconscious choices that we make every day <laughs> um, to the very real. Yeah, you talked about some real um, gritty topics that affect people, you know, everywhere. So it's been really interesting. Cool. Yeah. And I've got an exercise for um, our audience and I'm going to share my screen. So uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Really know what I'm like. I like to um, <laughs> give us a little yeah. bit of homework. <laughs> exactly. So basically, split, get a piece of paper, split it into three different columns. Um, and uh, in the first one, write the things you do because you feel that there is no choice. Right? Yeah. Then in okay. the second one, put the reasons why you feel that there is no choice. Mm. And in the third one, have a look at other options because there is always at least one other option. Right. And sometimes more. So when you've done that, right, mm -hmm. have a look. What, what have you discovered? What, what, uh, what, what do you do because there is no choice? And, it, it, and is it true that mm. you've got no choice? Right? Ask yourself. Yeah. And what are the... The, the steps you can take right now to move yourself out of the situation of there is no choice. 100%. And it could be even, as you said, those affirmations, how you speak to yourself could be the first step. Exactly. Uh, 
it's valuable to have this, um, to put it down on paper. I can imagine, as you said, when this is going around in your head, you may not be able to see it as clearly. So this is quite a valuable way to, um, to plot that out and to just see things that you said and to ask those questions. You know, is this true? Is there another option? That's really helpful. Yeah, definitely. So, and, and it's a way as well to take the time to um, be with ourselves and mm. just write down because sometimes we don't have um, time to um, to have a look at that. It's just like, oh, I'm doing it because I've got no choice. Well, think back and have yeah. a look, and uh, and maybe there is another option. Yeah. That's a really valuable resource. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I want to go back to definition of, of choice. So um, fabulous. Because that's um, we were talking about making a choice, and now I'm going to give you well what I think choice should be. Mm -hmm. Is choice is the most powerful tool we have. Everything boils down to choice. Well, we've we've seen it, right? We exist in a field of infinite possibilities. Mm. Every choice we make shuts an infinite number of doors and opens an infinite number of doors. At any point, we can change the direction of our lives by a simple choice. That's what we said. Yeah. And it's all in our hands, hearts, and minds. Well, thank Isabel, thank you. That um, I love the way you just surmised that. And uh, it reminds me then of, yeah, with the work that you do then, you're probably supporting clients to do this, to, to come to, like you said, working through exercises like that, exploring their goals. Um, and is there something that you have going on at the moment that you would like to uh, share with us, tell us about and invite people to join you on? Well, yeah, I've got that program for uh, ladies because I'm a woman's empowerment coach uh, based on uh, six weeks and it's called Unleash Your Power to Succeed. And obviously what is the best is to choose, right? To get your power back. <laughs> so you, you will reclaim your, your true self uh, and uh, well, what are we going to have a look at? So um, awareness, clarity, uh, negative patterns, you know, like thinking that we've got no choice, right? Is that true? <laughs> overcome your fears so obviously you're making the choice but you're afraid of uh, taking the plunge let's have a look set clear goals embrace challenges because i always give exercises um, to uh, to do um mm -hmm. and um and then you will become more confident after six weeks because you will have the clarity you will know where you're going and you will be more confident because you've got the skills and we're going to find the skills and the, uh, the values, your values. And um, we're going to rewire your brains to success. Wow. So that's based on, uh, on six weeks. And um, so uh, you can always contact me. That's what I was going to ask. How would, but yeah, how would people, if you, you know, that sounds amazing. And like to think about that transformation within that six week period, how would someone um, contact you, book on, onto the course, onto the program? Well, I've put the uh, my website on um, you know in the description of uh, of the Facebook live. So um, yeah, you can contact me. I will be happy to uh, to co to connect with you and have a thirty minute uh, discovery uh, call and a little bit of coaching so we get to know each other and then let's go. Brilliant. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really enjoyed the conversation. And I'm going to hand back over to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. I really enjoyed the, um, the conversation too. And, uh, and that was absolutely uh, fantastic because um, we've been talking about um, choice and we all make choices. And, uh, and, and thank you very much for participating as well. And uh, next week, uh, my guest will be Lorraine Langevin uh, from Canada, and she's going to talk about how to feel the invisible. So I invite you to, uh, to join me. It's going to be early than, uh, uh, earlier than normal. Uh, so uh, please uh, tune in. Uh, we'll uh, put some uh, information in, um, in the Facebook page. 
And obviously, if you have missed the, uh, the previous um, talk shows, don't worry. Uh, look for um, Phoenix uh, Coaching and Training uh, on YouTube and uh, subscribe and click on that bell so uh, you'll get the notification. So um, I uh, thank you again, uh, Joe. Thank you ever so much for uh, sharing uh, this topic with me. And uh, I hope to come back. I hope you will come back so uh, you will talk to us about well, harmony. Will it yes, be? it's <laughs> been amazing. Thank you for inviting. Yes, I would love to. And this has been a really, um, this was a, a nice choice for me to come on here and to, as I said, to be invited to host and yeah, to choose to do it because it's uh, very different sitting in the host seat as opposed to the speaker <laughs> seat. But um, yeah, I appreciate the choice. I appreciate the opportunity and I would love to come back and speak soon. So yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yes, let's do that soon. And uh, so uh, thank you very much, everybody. So see you next week with Lorraine. And uh, thanks again, Joe. And bye for now. Bye-bye.